My name is Ben Buckland. Welcome to this video series. I made this series for people who work in human rights, humanitarian, and other nonprofit organizations who want to capture better photos and better video of their work. People who maybe don't have much time, who perhaps don't have any fancy equipment, and who maybe don't want to go to the trouble or the expense of hiring a professional photographer or videographer. I'm a senior advisor at the Association for Prevention of Torture, and I'm also a photographer. But for a long time, I was just a stressed out guy doing human rights work and trying to take photos and communicate about the work that I was doing as an absolute afterthought. But through doing both photography and human rights work, I've come to understand that with just a couple of simple tools and techniques, we can all do a way better job of communicating about our work. Images are so often the first thing that people encounter about our work. They set the tone and they frame the message. But so often we spend years working on something and then when it comes time to communicate about it, to persuade people to join us or to help us, to show them what we've done, all we have are images and video that we took as an afterthought. In this video, I show a lot of images. I'm a photographer and I took most of them using professional equipment. But everything I say in this video and the rest of the videos in this series applies just as much, if not more so, to the camera that's on your phone, and to basic equipment, to the old SLR that someone in your office bought 10 years ago for a project. It's been lying gathering dust ever since. I can't stress this enough. You don't need fancy equipment to take great photos and good video of the work that you're doing. You just need to understand the story that you want to tell. And this is easy because it's your story. It's a story of your work and your projects. You just need some tips. And that's what I want to help with. In this series, I'll be covering voice and tone, composition, editing, light and ethics. But in this first video, I want to start with something that at least to me sounds boring, but I think is really super important. And that's planning and objectives. It just means sitting down before whatever it is you're doing happens and thinking about a few questions. What are my communication objectives for this project or this activity? Who's the audience for it? How can photos and videos help? And what am I going to do with that material once I have it? Answering these questions is going to make it way easier to do everything else. It's going to save you time and also save the time of anyone you're trying to photograph or that you put in front of your camera. I'm sure all of us have come back from a work thing with 50 of the same photos, 50 bad photos of a poorly lit meeting room, for example. It took time to take those 50 photos and they weren't helping you to achieve anything. Or maybe you filmed an interview with someone, but it's never going to get used because it wasn't linked clearly to an objective. So how can we do better? I'm going to talk in this video about three broad categories of objectives and the audience as a material that I think go with them. The first of these is to document, the second is to inform, and the third is to advocate or inspire. The first kind of objective is to document. Often the audience here is just you or maybe some of your colleagues to remind you of what happened. So that six months down the line when you're writing your donor report, for example, you can remember what the hell that activity was about. Your photo and video needs here are probably just of the content. You might need to take a lot, but the focus is probably going to be more on photos of flip charts and notes and the size of a prison cell and the food in a psychiatric hospital or whatever it is that's the subject of your project. The focus is going to be less on taking great artistic images and more on collecting them and storing them in a place so that you can find them later when you need them. After a recent project I was doing on safeguards and police custody in Madagascar, I came back from the project with around 300 photographs of police registers. Um, from an artistic point of view, these are terrible photos, but the point wasn't about that. It was about making sure that they're legible, that I can read them, and that they're stored in a way that I can find them later, and that the confidentiality of the information that's in them is protected. The second kind of objective is to inform. 
This might just be to show a defined group of people that something happened. Maybe it's to go in a news article or with a donor report or to be used later as part of a bigger narrative where you connect a bunch of these things together into a broader story. The audience is bigger, but here you probably need way less in terms of quantity, but of a much higher quality. One image of everyone who was there, of the person that spoke, of the demonstration that happened, of the thing that you built. Of course, this is going to be different depending on what your objectives and your audience are, and being clear about what those are in advance is going to help you to make sure that you have the images and the footage that you need. Even if you don't need many, as a photographer or a videographer, you might want to take a few photos or take a few takes just to make sure that later on everyone isn't blinking in the one photo or you forgot to plug in your microphone in the one take of the interview. But once you're sure you have the material you need, you can put down your camera and focus on the activity itself without waving your phone around trying to capture images that don't meet your objective. Showing that something happened can seem like a boring objective, but in some situations it can be as important as the thing itself. I was working some time ago with uh, an environmental organization who was doing extraordinary frontline work protecting one of the last great temperate rainforests on Earth. And someone in that organization said to me, without the communication side, we're just some people going camping and occasionally getting arrested. Without the showing that it happened, we're not even getting close to achieving the objectives that we want to achieve. The third kind of objective is to advocate or inspire. This is when you want to tell a story about a change that happened or failed to happen, where you want to help people learn from something that you did or inspire them to action. Often this requires a mix of visual media and also writing about it. It also requires a much longer conversation about what your objectives, audience, and material are going to be. Often the audience here is going to be much broader. Maybe it's the general public, maybe it's other organizations who might be inspired or interested in the things that you're doing or the lessons that you've learned. If your aim is to inspire or advocate, then it's going to be important at this point to think about the values of your audience and how they intersect with the values of your own organization. Ideally, the images and the video that you collect will be at the intersection of these values and priorities. When this is your objective, it might be useful to break down the process into a few steps, including at the beginning asking the question, what do I want my audience to think or to feel or to do after they've viewed the content that I'm creating? These are simple questions, but thinking about them at the beginning can really help you narrow down the change or the impact that you want to have. Once you've answered these questions, it's going to be much easier to define what's a story that's going to help you get there, or what video and images you need to tell that story or show that change. At this stage, you might want to make a shot list and sketch or storyboard the shots that you might want to take. Shot list and storyboard are fancy words, but it can just mean writing a list of images or scenes you want and then drawing some stick figures in your notebook that roughly show what's in them. You can also use sites like Noanote to put all of this together in one place with your to-do list and all of the rest. Doing this can really help you know if the images or the video you want are going to tell your story or if you need something more or something else. This is linked to a reflection that I'll cover in my video on ethics and permissions about whether the videos and the images you want are those you can actually get. People like to see photos of other people. Is this possible? Are there ethical or safety issues about getting that material? Will our audience turn away from confronting images? And if so, how can we document our work in ways that's going to keep them engaged? So, to recap, the three main types of objective are to document, to inform, to inspire or advocate. Once you've identified these needs, then you need to ask, what do I need to be able to get this material? Can you do it yourself in the margins of whatever else you're doing? Would you need to set aside specific time to get it done? Do you need to talk to some people to make sure they're okay with it in advance? Is it something you can do yourself? Or do you need the help of a colleague or a professional photographer to help you tell the story? Do you need more equipment than just your phone? No, you, you just need your phone. 
In my experience, time is the most important part of this because it's really hard to do your normal job and also try and take photos and shoot video at the same time and your lunch break is not the moment where you want to be madly running around trying to get the content you need. If you're the person implementing the project and you think it's important to get good photos or good video of, of what's happening, you might need to push your bosses to let you make time in the agenda of whatever you're doing just for this. But being clear about your objectives and your audience is going to make it much easier to make this argument. Once you have all the material, then you need to use it. Great photos, great video don't help anyone if they're just sitting on a hard drive. And this also in, needs to include the question of when you're going to use it. Is there some kind of material that's going to date quickly? People wearing COVID masks, for example. Is there a time element you need to consider? So let's recap. Think about your objectives and audience in advance. Decide what kinds of photos and videos you need to meet those goals. Take the time to prepare. Make dedicated time in your schedule to get the shots and material you need and have a plan for how you're gonna use it. Thanks a lot, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with the rest of the videos in this series.